Hi, we are here today to continue with our programs about the Brazilian legal system. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the Centro Universitario UDF that is supporting us with this program today. The UDF is located here in Brasilia. It's the, one of the oldest uh, faculty of our city, the capital of Brazil. And I would like really to say thank you about that. Uh, here is my classroom. I teach here constitutional law, Brazilian constitutional law. So it's a pleasure to be here in my classroom and to talk to the public abroad. Well, uh, let's start with our program today. Our programs on the Brazilian legal system follow with two different aspects. On one hand, we will explain the evolution of the Brazilian constitutional system, constitution by constitution. We did it in the first program, starting with the 1824 constitution, our first one. We will continue until we reach the present federal constitution of 1988, commenting on the main aspects of each one. Parallel of our journey into the constitutional history, we will address a specific institute of the Brazilian legal system, such as, among others, actions, constitutional guarantees, structure of powers, relations between the states and the union, I mean federal government, and so on. We believe that these are issues of great importance and interest to the public abroad, students, professionals, who want to learn more about the Brazilian system, for professional reasons or just out of curiosity. Our first specific issue is the control of constitutionality of the laws, as I wrote here in the whiteboard. Well, let's talk now about uh, the brief history of the control of constitutionality in Brazil, starting with the Constitution of 1824. That's our intention right now. Well, let's go. Well, so, as I said before, our issue today is control of constitutionality, and let's start with a brief history in Brazil. The control of constitutionality is one of the most important issues to understand with how the system check and balances function, and of course the powers and institutions of a country. The judicial review is a tool of fundamental importance for maintaining the supremacy of the Constitution. Brazil adopts a fair, broad system that encompasses both the North American and European models. I mean, we are very rich in this, in this system because we, get, we got part, as I said, of the Americans' Uh, model, American experience, and also the European models uh, like uh, the Hans Kelsen lesson. Well, our first experience began with the Constitution of 1824, as we previously discussed in the first program. At that time, the control was exercised by the legislature. It was believed at that time that whoever was elected would be the one who was entitled to declare the nullity of a law, its inconsistency with the Constitution. The following Constitution, I mean the second one, the Brazilian second one, was the first Republican. It was enacted in 1891. Uh, le let me repeat, it was the second Brazilian constitution, because the first one was the 1824, and it was the first Republican constitution. Well, that one in 1891 also, as we have seen, ended with the French model adopted by the previous, Bra the previous Brazilian constitution. 
that recognize the legislature as the only legitimate body to declare laws unconstitutional. The 1891 Constitution was inspired by American model, which began with, began with the case Marbury v. Madison. This model only allows the control to be exercised in specific situations. I mean, the decision on whether a statute is appropriate or not with the Constitution, always relating to a specific case between two parties to discuss a given real situation. I mean, concrete, not hypothetical, abstract. Well, the 1891 Brazilian Constitution, as I said before, it was the first Republican one, the first Republican Constitution. The previous ones, the 1824, was uh, monarchical, as we saw on the first program. This constitution, the, the 1891, it was inspired, I mean, in talking about the constitutionality of law, talking about judicial review, it was inspired in the American model, which began with the case Marbury versus Madison. This model only allows the, the control to be exercised in specific situations. I mean, the decision on whether a statute is appropriate or not with the Constitution, always relating to a specific case between two parties to discuss a given real situation. I mean, concrete, not hypothetical, abstract. From more than half a century, from 1891 to 1965, the judicial review in Brazil was basically this. In 1965, the Constitutional Amendment number 19 introduced the direct action of unconstitutionality, which, following the model proposed by Hans Kelsen and introduced into the Constitution of Austria, in 1922. This is the European model. Most of the European countries adopt this kind of model of control of constitutionality. Until 1965, we just had the American model. We just had the experience of American model. The things began to change here in Brazil in 1965, as I said before, with the uh, amendment, constitutional amendment uh, of 1965. Well, by this model, uh, the European model, just some authorities can challenge the constitutionality of a particular standard directed before constitutional court. The direct action does not require actual situation, concrete situation, just the application of unconstitutionality before the specific court that some country call a uh, constitutional court or something like that. For that reason, it is also called abstract action. Why abstract? Abstract because, as I said before, there is no necessity to demonstrate to uh, a concrete situation. That's it.
Well, let's talk now about how is the Brazilian system today. I mean, the Brazilian control of constitutionality. Yeah? That's what we are talking about. How it is today? Well, uh, today, as I said before, we have two models. One model is the concrete one, the concrete one that it, that it is the oldest one since 1891, the, the Republica Constitution of 19, 1891. And we also have the abstract model, the abstract control that it is from uh, the Constitutional Amendment 19, uh, number 19 of 1965. So we have both models, the American one, the concrete, and the European one. Okay? Well, today, in fact, more than 100 years ago, since Brazil adopted the system of judicial control of constitutionality of laws, any citizen, in any case, he or she is a party, as a party, may request the a court to declare a particular provision that does not comply with the constitutional, the, the higher law. Therefore, the Brazilian system allows in any judicial proceeding before any court or tribunal that a person requests a judicial pronouncement on the appropriateness of a norm before the constitution. In this way, the Brazilian system is identical, similar to the US one, which was Brazil's inspiration since Marburg versus Madison, the, the case that started the judicial review in the world, as we, as we talked before. Well, let's see the abstract model, abstract control, that is based on the Hans Kelsen lessons, that, uh, that, it, that it is the European one. It, it was adopted in the Austrian constitution of 1922. Well, as I said before, the Brazilian system for more than a century has adopted only the diffuse, adopted only the diffuse model. I mean, the one that requires a specific situation for the judiciary to decide a case that argued the unconstitutionality of a norm, a law, a statute. The Constitutional Amendment number 19 of 1965 created the direct action of unconstitutionality. Let me uh, write here, direct action of uncons unconstitutionality, okay? So, this amendment uh, modified deeply the Brazilian system of judicial review. The DAU, Direct Action of Unconstitutionality, was created by Hans, by Hans Kelsen, one of the most important scholars of 20th century. The first constitution document that adopted it was, as I said before, the 1922 Austria Constitution. In cases challenging the federal law or constitutional amendment, the direct action shall be brought only before the Supreme Federal Court, that here in Brazil we call Supremo Tribunal Federal that is based here in Brasilia with 11 members and it was inspired in the American model of the Supreme Court. But in the United States, uh, the Supreme Court has nine members and here in Brazil we have 11 members in the Supreme Court. So just the Supreme Federal Court, that we call here Supreme Tribunal Federal, can deal, can decide a direct action of unconstitutionality. Well, uh, but if a state or a municipal law violates the state constitution, 
because as we, as you know, as we know, Brazil is a federative uh, uh, country. So we have in the federal level the union, the federal government, the union. We have the state level, yeah, the states. We are 26 states here in Brazil, and we have the municipal, okay, cities, municipal. So, if a law violates just the state constitution, we cannot demand a declaration of unconstitutionality before the Supreme, the Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court. We cannot. Just federal laws can be brought before the Supreme Court or state laws if it is contrary to the federal constitution. Okay? So, if a state or a municipal law is against, against the state constitution, it has to be brought before the Court of Justice of the state. For example, we have a, a state here, Bahia. If a, 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 a statute, if a law in Bahia or in Sao Paulo or in Rio de Janeiro is contrary to the state constitution, it has to be brought the declaration of unconstitutionality uh, before the Court of Justice of the State, not before the STF, the Supreme Tribunal Federal. That is our judiciary system. Well, when the direct action of unconstitutionality was established in 1961, uh, Amendment, Amendment 19, yeah, as we said before, in 1965, only a single authority could propose it before the Supreme Court. I mean, only one authority could propose the direct action of unconstitutionality before the Supreme Court. It was the Attorney General of the Republic. Okay, and that uh, at that time wasn't independent from the federal executive body. Nowadays it is independent. Nowadays the Attorney General of the Republic, Attorney General of the Republic, that we call here Procurador Geral da República, PGR, Procurador Geral da República. It's like the Attorney General in the United States. Uh, it's look like it's a slight difference because we have here uh, the PGR and we have also the Attorney General of the Union. But let's talk just about the Attorney General of the Republic. At that time, as I said, in 1965, he was the only authority, just him, could propose a direct action of unconstitutionality before uh, the Supreme Court. The fact that this individual was the single authority with legitimacy to propose the action and was a liaison with the executive branch raised huge criticism among the Brazil, Brazilian scholars. It was not good because, you know, he was not independent. He had a huge relationship with the President of the Republic and, and he was not, uh, I mean, independent enough, or, or, or better say, he was not independent in order to propose the direct action of unconstitutionality. Well, that's it for today. We will continue about this subject, about these issues in another program. Thank you for your attention and see you in another program. Thank you very much.